introduce and meet our newest resident here, Nancy Hostetter. Please stand up and be welcomed here. She just moved in here last week. She came all the way from Lexington, Virginia to, to live with us here. And so we welcome you as well. So we have a big agenda here. I have I have 12 different items on the agenda speakers. So just be quiet. We'll try to get everyone in here. I gave them all precise three minutes or five minutes, and I gave Jan 10 minutes. You know, you have to give her more time than anybody else. But anyway, Jan, you have the full 10 minutes, but please only take eight of them. <laughs> I know, I know. Look, I'm no more important than anybody else, so I will keep it brief. Um, but I do want to just ask if there's any questions, because I think the last time uh, a couple folks had questions, and I do want to make sure that I can answer those. So, good morning, everyone. Good to see you. I'd like to see more, um, but understand that folks are getting used to Zoom. So it's just like so many employees. They want to be hybrids. They want to maybe work from home. They want to maybe come in. And I'm like, oh. It doesn't work with a 24-7 resident-focused business, so. But we do have to keep changing so that we can uh, keep our staff and residents happy, so. So speaking of change, Functional Pathways, our new therapy group, wow. Um, I'm hearing some great things. And thank you for your overwhelming support of that group. Uh, when I say overwhelming, uh, they're continuing to try to hire people because there are so many people, including outpatient. We're now getting some referrals from outpatient physicians, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, so they've been quite busy and they do continue to try to find staff uh, so that we can meet uh, not only our residents, but our outpatient therapy needs as well. I just wanted to let you know, we do have a request for proposal out there. Uh, we are in the process of collecting proposals for a facilities condition assessment and an energy audit for this campus. We're hopeful that we can combine the two uh, for a low, low price of determined. And the proposals are actually due back to us by April 29th, and then we will move forward with our selection process. So that assessment will really allow us to have a good understanding of what our strategic capital uh, dollars need to be over the next uh, few years and any special maintenance um, expenditure plan that we will need for future budgeting as well. So uh, again, uh, we're gonna get it done and it's not gonna sit on the shelf. So uh, we are trying to look at the things that we can do and uh, keep moving. And so that's one of the things that uh, we have selected to do. Booster clinics, COVID. Can you believe we're still talking about this crazy thing? COVID. Um, those dates are being set up, are set up already for next Thursday and Friday, April 28th. We will be doing it from one to three. And April 29th, it will be one to four. We have over 120 residents that are interested in those second booster. We are going to do the alphabetical process from end to beginning. Sorry, Ed. <laughs> uh, if you would rather wait until fall, and we are hearing uh, some word and some documentation out there that fall may be better, uh, we are going to plan one then as well. But don't show up in the fall expecting a third booster. It's either spring or fall at this point, according to CDC. And then Rockridge Area Health Center, uh, the goal is to sign that contract uh, by June 1st. It was April 1st. That was a little too fast for them. Uh, we were ready, but uh, they were not, they did not have all of their um, ducks in a row and rightfully so they have a lot to do to prepare for that so we will be signing that contract June 1st uh, at this point it's four days a week they'll be here Tuesday through Friday Monday will be our day to use our clinic for our residents uh, and we are in the process of trying to figure out the um, the uh, plan for that and what that looks like for us so so that concludes my report any questions 
Yes. Uh, will, I, will, our, will our new doctor come here? Yes, Rockford Jerry Health Center will be sending a doctor. Uh, I will get you his resume when we are uh, fully confirmed. June 1st will be the uh, date to sign. They're thinking of possibly starting to see patients Ju uh, in July, so they get it all set up. So yes, it's, uh, I believe he's an internist with many years of experience. So, yeah, any other questions? Okay, I think I made my eight minutes. <laughs> all right, Herbie. And he has, he has 10 minutes as well. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning. Uh, glad to have everyone here. And for those that didn't make it, I uh, hope to see you next meeting uh, as well. Uh, a few updates. Uh, obviously, we've been uh, springtime's here, uh, except for the other day, and we had sleep. Um, so it's crazy weather we're still having. Um, but with that being said, we have switched the building over to the chiller, um, of course, and then it's sleet. Uh, 32 degree weather. Um, so hopefully the next couple of days it warms up the building will be comfortable. Um, but with that, we've got uh, Sunrise Ridge planning um, has been done and completed. Uh, things are looking well. Uh, put together a water plan uh, to make sure it stays watered until, until everything gets established. Uh, Mike Morrison was up there recently uh, finishing up on some of the grass areas that he was still uh, needing to tweak on a couple areas. He does a little bit more TLC. Uh, we've got Chris Leslie. Uh, he's been on and off property a little bit. Uh, weather's been playing a little havoc with him yet. Uh, but they have cut the slope on the Hickory Hill Trail in. Uh, they'll be back uh, next couple of days to dress that up. And then we will start working on planting the native grasses behind Sycamore Lane, along with slit seeding the trail in as well. Um, on Hickory Hill and on the backside of Sunrise Ridge where grass still needs a little bit of establishment. Um, for those, uh, the other thing that he'll be working on while he's here too, is we've had those seat containers moved out of the staff parking lot, uh, but we still have the open top dumpster uh, there as well. We're gonna do a little bit of work in that area and try to dress it up and clean it up and move the dumpster a little further up in the parking lot to try to make that at least a little bit more out appealing than what it is currently. Um, and then we'll take some feedback from there and work on what's the next step. Um, for those that are in the South building, uh, these past few days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, was a little struggle with water. Uh, so I appreciate everybody's patience while we work through getting that water uh, repaired. Um, and definitely a thanks to the maintenance guys because those guys we had to really kind of babysit that thing for about 24 hours there at one point. Um, so I appreciate that. Uh, and we have our new assistant for director of operations. She started Monday. Her name is Kathy Morsey. Uh, so as you get a chance to uh, say hi, she's already jumped in with both feet and running with it. So I'm excited about that. She's uh, a pleasure to have and looking forward to working with her in the future. A few other things coming up. Uh, we've got uh, Marcus Engelman will start to be doing the weed and feed control uh, for the property. We sent out an email. I know I've gotten some responses back already for those that would prefer us not to be in their area uh, with the feed, weed and feed. Uh, we are doing a granule this year versus a spray. Uh, so we think that's a, that'll be a better approach. Um, a few other notables, biannual deep cleaning still keep going through. Um, Lena and them, her crew is doing an all, outstanding job. We've heard a lot of compliments about that. So um, that's been a great success. Um, see, a couple other things. Uh, I have been in touch with Eddie Edwards. Uh, this is a project we started back in November of last year, um, having some new signs made for the exterior parts of the building uh, with all the new construction and stuff and clean up signage. Uh, they do have that in production now and hope to be scheduled within the next month of getting those installed. Um, 
in a big shout out to the committees. I know the facilities committee, the horticulture committee, those groups are really working hard on trying to recreate and format those committees a little bit about coming up with some projects and goals. So I appreciate all the conversations and inputs that's been happening in those meetings and, and making some progress forward. So that's all I got. Any questions? Good morning, everyone. Those of you in, uh, on Zoom saw the top of my head for a while there, but uh, uh, welcome again, Nancy. Um, Katie and Kevin have been working really hard, uh, moving folks in and hoping to get new folks signed up. Uh, we did also have new residents closed yesterday, AP and Ham Smith um, closed on Cottage 1030. They won't be living here for a few weeks, so we'll have them come uh, next month to introduce them. Um, but we current now, since we've just had two closings in the last week, that leaves us with six uh, closings that are still scheduled and four apartments that remain open and ready for folks to reserve. We also anticipate another apartment coming available to us in the next couple of weeks. So we're at right now 93.3% occupancy point in time with 97.3% uh, occupied or reserved. Um, we are planning to do a um, open house tour next Friday if everything still if feels safe um, with COVID. Um, and so we'll have folks on the campus touring apartments that are occupied and some of the ones that are unoccupied. Um, of those four apartments that we have available, um, many of them are already starting to get some work done. So even though they're not reserved, we're trying to make them look uh, up to our, our standards. So thanks to operations team for helping us coordinate that. Uh, we had a successful uh, meeting last uh, week, a week and a half ago, a Zoom panel, which we continue to do on moving in single. So we had, uh, thank you residents to, for participating on that. And we had a lot of folks tune in for that who, you know, sometimes say there's so many couples that live in Kendall. If I moved here single, what would it be like? And of course the panelists said, it's no problem at all. And, you know, it's an, a wonderful open community. So uh, we will be seeing some, uh, video crews here uh, May 3rd and 4th will be on campus. We're doing some videos, testimonials, plus some videos of campus. And at the end of May, you'll see a photographer here for a couple of days. Katie, you want to go next? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. As always, I'd like to start out by thanking all of you for hosting um, lunches and dinners with our folks and also inviting us into your home. So thank you so much. Um, since the last meeting, Kevin and I have had 15 triads and tours, um, one of those being virtual, and they're coming from all over the place. We had two from DC, one from West Virginia, Stanton, Virginia, four from Lexington, Arlington, Massachusetts, and then South Carolina, Monterey, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, um, New York, California, and Maine. So we're really getting all corners. So, um, and a lot of those resulted in what Kevin's going to talk about. Good morning. So yeah, all of those tours and triad visits resulted in 11 new members to our priority wait list since the last Residents Association meeting. And they come from all over. Uh, Fairview, North Carolina, Lake Mohegan, New York, Castine, Maine, two different couples from Washington, D.C., Stanton, Virginia, Clifton Forge, Virginia, Northern California, Clarendon Hills, Illinois, Rafine, Virginia, and Roanoke, Virginia. So with those 11 new waitlist members, we have 173 on the waitlist. 32 of them are on the ready list. So you'd, you'd say, well, well, there shouldn't be anything open, right? 18 of the 32 on the ready list want cottages. We have no cottages available currently. 14 want apartments, either larger or smaller than the four we currently have open. But I think the apartment open house tour we're doing next week will hopefully help us find the right folks for the apartments we have open today. So I think things are going pretty well. 
Yes, thank you. And Paul just uh, wanted me to add of the four apartments that are open, the four that are open, they are all apartments. Um, and, the, and then we're having another one, another apartment open. So we'll soon have five apartments open unless we reserve some in the last next couple of days. Um, there's a one bedroom on the north side, it's ground floor. Um, there's a two bedroom den on the third floor of the north building. And then we have um, two large two bedrooms um, over in the south building on the ground floor, and then a um, medium sized two bedroom on the first floor of the south building. So if you have friends out there, I don't know what we have, but they're getting um, nicely. And I, I will add that when I set up my marketing um, goals, we try to get at least 30 people to join the wait list every year because we figure that that's enough to build up our wait list for the amount of reservations we're going to get and that's kind of that sustainable number there uh, katie and kevin are already at 22 by april so people love us and people love them so <laughs> that's good news can you tell them about our temporary uh, visitor oh uh, jan asked me um you will see someone um that is not a resident living in apartment number uh 13. Um, she is a traveling nurse who's going to be here about six weeks. Um, so she's on right now. There's actually three three of the apartments that are open or reserved are on that um, ground floor level over there next to Marge, Cheryl, and Anna Lou Souter. And her name is Janice. So she's going to be busy working, <laughs> but you might see her uh, coming back and forth through the apartments. All right, thank you. Good morning. Um, so just to give a few updates or kind of keep an eye out for from a resident services or clinic standpoint to tag along to what Jan mentioned about our booster clinic coming up, just a reminder, there are no signups. You will come by your last name. You do not need to bring your insurance card, but please make sure you bring your COVID vaccination card so we can keep that up to date for you when you come. Um, if you have not updated your file of life form with Danielle or me, please get with one of us so we can make sure that is updated. Um, we continue to call it your file of life, but it does say, I think, emergency transfer form. This is the form that you keep on your refrigerator that um, hopefully we, know, we don't have to use, but in the event of an emergency and 911 is called, we can send that so it has diagnoses, allergies, important contacts. So we've got that all up to date. So if you have not updated that this year, please get with one of us. Um, and then just a few things, some upcoming education that Danielle and I will be getting on the calendar. Um, we're going to be doing your emergency education of, you know, using your pet, what to do in emergencies. We're going to be getting a um, continuum of care transitions education on the schedule for the next couple of months, just to talk about what that looks like through the continuum. And um, we're, I think, in June going to be doing education on advanced directives and advanced care planning. So powers of attorneys, advanced medical directives, do not, not resuscitate. So keep an eye out for updates on those. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I want to introduce Katie Harlow. She's the, direct, the activities director at at Borden and Webster, and she's going to bring her entire staff forward here. And I want you all to meet them and she'll introduce them for you and talk about volunteer opportunities at Borden and Webster. Hello. <laughs> I might have to stand in front of this thing. I'm really short. <laughs> so I'm like you said, I'm Katie. Um, I'm the thank you. <laughs> Uh, I'm Katie. I'm the, the resident life program coordinator covering Borden and Webster centers. And this is my lovely team and our activities dog, Gideon. <laughs> this is Anne. She, um, well, within the, within the Borden and Webster centers, we kind of operate out of a neighborhood model. We have 
for the lack of better terms, hallways um, that our folks work with the residents on. So Anne is working out of our Shenandoah Hall, which is also formerly known as the 500 Hall. Um, this is Anne. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> hello. Hi. <laughs> um, and then Katie on the far right. Um, she is working out of our Blue Ridge Hall, our Blue Ridge neighborhood, which is formerly known as our 400 Hall. Katie, say hello. Hi. <laughs> and then Jacqueline, she is working out of our Webster Center, our assisted living, and along with Gideon. Gideon, do you have any words? <laughs> Get so, in front of the Zoom camera as well. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no. Everybody say hello. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to have Jacqueline actually speak. Jacqueline's been in um, communication with Paul, just touching base on the volunteer process. And she's going to kind of walk you through the need. And then um, I'll follow up with what that process looks like regarding our policy with volunteering. Hello, everybody. I'm Jacqueline. Thanks for having us today. Um, so I will start and just kind of give you a grand overview. Don't think you have to remember all of these things. We're going to make a list that you can sign up with. But this is just to kind of get the wheels turning on some um, potential opportunities. So in Borden, like she said, we've got the <coughs> two hallways there right now, Shenandoah and Blue Ridge. Some things that we could use help with over there would be bingo um, assistance from contact, um, getting transportation with people down to programs. Um, gardening, we have a lovely like raised bed area. Put you down, Gideon. Um, so we're open to people that have some expertise or would like to help with that. One-on-one um, -on -one companions, just some people need somebody to talk to or with a listening ear that might not be able to leave their rooms. Um, people that are interested in music, whether that's playing, singing, to read to residents perhaps, doing devotions or Bible studies, helping deliver mail, um, and doing pet visits. We have our one little pet, but he's only can do this so much, you know, so I know we've got a lot of pets out there, so um, they're friendly and not Two in your face, you know, that might be something we could look into. Um, and then also just think about other potential options. We're, we're happy to work with individuals if you have a, other interests. For Webster, kind of a lot of the same types of things, um, but and more perhaps. So we've got a walking club that we try to have going. So we could really use volunteers for that to help have, we have a lot of different paces of walkers. So it's nice if we have multiple hands to be able to, you know, walk with those different kind of natural groups that form. Um, gardening, we have the whole little courtyard outside of Webster, and that is up to the residents what they want to do, but we could use some extra expertise and input on that, maybe some help. Um, I've had a few residents show interest in knitting that maybe have done that in the past, but don't, you know, it's been a really long time. So kind of like a re-entry type class um, and we can get that going and do something regularly. Crossword puzzles, news discussions, jigsaw puzzles, playing cards, we do poker and bridge. Um, one thing is we're, we are interested in taking some like historic tours on the Kindle buses around Lexington. And so we've got, I know we've got a wide range of expertise in the community. Um, so to have somebody come on the bus with us and take a little tour where they don't even have to get off the bus, perhaps. Um, singers and musicians and really anything else. If you want to talk about, if you've got some kind of fun experience, we'd love to have guest speakers come in and talk. Um, and like I say, anything else, we'd love to talk with you and we can make you can make your own program we'll help you so that's a grand overview and like i say we'll write this down for you so don't worry but thank you so much and i'll pass it over
So along with everything that Jacqueline just shared and, and needs and interests that the residents may have that we would like to see you all to input with, um, just from going from across the campus, we're going to have some sign up sheets, um, maybe along the bulletin boards. I can coordinate with Paul for best placement of those so that you all can have uh, another another resource as to what Jacqueline just shared and times and dates and things like that that we're looking for. Um, and then I will get with anybody that's signing up to go start the process. And that means going through any confidentiality policies, HIPAA things, things that we can and cannot do as volunteers within the board and Webster Center. So that will be discussed so that you all are set, set up for as much success as possible with the residents and kind of forming that, um, that combination between the, the continuum of care. Any questions about volunteer stuff or any of us? <laughs> All right, oh, we got one over there. Oh, sorry. I okay. Do the volunteers have to wear a mask when they're in Webster or Board? Yes, ma'am. As of right now, that is still the policy. We do have to wear masks. Any other questions? Is the therapy dog? <laughs> he's, he's not a registered therapy dog, but he is very therapeutic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Before you leave, you want to tell them about little Katie? <laughs> okay, so now, you know, coming up on a year, I'm finally introducing my staff, but little Katie over here. <laughs> Uh, we finally call her <laughs> littler. littler. Um, interestingly, both of our last names start with H A R, so we have to somehow differentiate between the two. But she is going to be going to grad school for social work, so she will be leaving us um, coming in June. So if you have the and you have the time and you're interested in volunteering, she's on our Blue Ridge neighborhood. She is lovely to work with and spend some time with, and I know that she will be greatly missed. Um, but if you have the opportunity, try, see if you can spend some time with her. I know that she would love to see all of you guys as well. All right, we're going to have a quick Walker Caucus. What's going on in the Free North Committee meeting? Thank you, Paul. This is a big day, or last week was a big week, rather. Uh, Herbie mentioned that uh, his uh, bucket loader was on the backside of Hickory Hill, uh, grading out the, uh, the pathway down there. That, I believe, is, or I'm quite sure, is the very first shovel full of dirt moved by the Three North Committee specifically. Uh, we are no longer a planning committee. We are an executing committee. So uh, that, that was a real milestone. Um, the trails back there, uh, Herbie mentioned they're going to be planted in the next, uh, hopefully the next couple of weeks. And um, he didn't mention, but I will, that he's asked that uh, once they are planted, no walking back there for uh, approximately a month. Uh, it depends on the weather somewhat, but uh, um, no walking for about a month and probably two to three months before it's golf cart is accessible. So we're going to have a little time of uh, having to be patient and watching the grass grow. <laughs> we are working on establishing a picnic destination area up on top of the hill. If you haven't been up there, the view is just absolutely spectacular. And I think that's going to be a really special place. Um, we are also uh, working on getting some uh, benches for uh, resting on the way up the hill and, and the way back down, by the way, um, and maybe getting some shade trees planted there so that uh, there are rest stops. Um, it's been requested and we're looking at getting uh, trail maps for the entire campus, not just that backside, and uh, signage uh, worked up. It's gonna take us a little time to do that. We've gotta get the trails established first. Um, Farther out up there on the hill, uh, there are uh, goals to have a pavilion, maybe with a composting toilet, um, so that we have a more all weather 
uh, facility up there. And uh, there's a stock tank on the back of the uh, property that uh, we're looking into turning into some sort of a water feature if it could be done. So uh, progress being made on, on the trails. The second uh, short-term goal that we've been working on or to be implemented this year is of course the dog park. It is making progress. The dog owners have finished design and uh, fencing specs for uh, what's to be the dog park. And those are now with Herbie waiting for uh, uh, bids and uh, decisions on fence making. Uh, barring any unforeseen uh, problems, we would hope to have a functional, safely fenced, usable dog park by probably midsummer. Um, that's only going to be the first half of that project, however. And uh, what we are looking into, what the dog owners are looking into, is uh, building that out into a really first class facility with a gazebo for weather protection, perhaps a water line, perhaps a agility apparatus for the dogs, and uh, probably some ornamental vegetation to break up the fence line a little bit. Now, that is not intended at this time to be a three north project those last items. The dog owners are taking that over. Um, a dedicated fund is being established for uh, owners and other friends of the dog park to uh, make donations and make that uh, all those enhancements possible. So within a week or so, we expect to have uh, the mechanism established for that. Uh, once they do have donations available, the uh, dog owners group, the uh, COG may also be uh, seeking some matching fund type of grants. Uh, look, those are the two goals for this year, trying to get something on the ground by midsummer usable, uh, trying to look a little longer range and over the horizon. We're starting to look at the uh, Guernsey Pond water feature. That's the uh, pond proposed for uh, by the four-way stop at uh, Kendall Drive and Sycamore. At this point, we're doing simply looking at the feasibility of a feasibility study. <laughs> There's lots of engineering involved in that project. Uh, there are going to be uh, serious costs involved in that project. So that's, that's on the long-range planning goal. However, we got immediate and very positive interest from both Washington Lee and BMI engineering departments in helping with the first studies. So uh, that is looking encouraging. On all of these projects, uh, it's our hope that these are, are big, they're gonna affect major parts of the campus and a lot of our lives in, in positive ways, but it's got to be done with a whole lot of resident input. And uh, so let me make a, another plea, and we're going to keep saying, please let us know uh, suggestions, objections, uh, what's needed. The three North Committee members themselves, of course, are always available. Uh, horticulture is also going to be involved in a lot of this, especially in the tree planting and the viewscapes. So any, approaching any member of Horticulture Committee, the Wellness Committee, is uh, involved with the walking trails and the dog park. So members of the uh, wellness committee can, uh, can accept comments and uh, pass them on. Um, for the dog park specifically, there is the uh, dog interest group, the COG, and that's on Katie Webb among other presences. So uh, you can just go right on there and make comments too. <laughs> So that's my update, Paul. Did I make the 10? Thank you, thank you. And I'll let you know that the, the committee has met five times so far. We usually meet every couple of weeks. And we just, uh, Linda Kramer is posting the minutes on Katie. So you can go ahead, probably after today, uh, be able to go on Katie and read the actual minutes of the five meetings so far. And we'll continue to posting those minutes so you'll be up to date of what's going on. Um, 
big thing we have today is, is we're going to introduce the dining staff, uh, similar to what we did last month for the maintenance, but they're going to be introduced at quarter off because, you know, they're preparing lunch. And so she has to figure out getting them up here in between their preparations. So at quarter off, it precisely, we will introduce the, uh, the, uh, the dining staff. But now the next one to speak is, is Hardin Marion. Give you a little update on Kendall College. Good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, this is, uh, as Paul says, is an update on, on Kendall College. Uh, when the pandemic hit us two years ago, Kendall College, like just about everything else, went into hibernation. And uh, we didn't come out until a little bit last year. And last year, we discovered that our committee had been reduced by death and resignation to just two members, Ruth Woodcock and me. So we had to reorganize the committee. And we did that with the addition of the following people, Linda Dwyer, Bob Gettings, Deirdre McAfee, Lad Sessions, and Don Thomas. So we now have a functional committee. And as you know, we, uh, we put on two programs last year, one with Rob Mish and one in December with uh, Elliot King on surrealism. And we have two programs so far this year. Um, one is, was completed, uh, and that was uh, Lena Hill back in March. The other one is in process. Uh, we've had one uh, performance so far by uh, uh, Tim Gaylard, and he will have his second performance, his second lecture this afternoon at 4.30, and will conclude his uh, presentation on uplifting music with his final lecture next Wednesday at 4.30. That's the 27th of April. We have two upcoming programs, uh, and you'll have notice of this both in connections and with uh, flyers in advance of the, um, of, of the first meeting. The first one is uh, on the economics of Indian reservations by a BMI professor of economics and business whose name I will try to pronounce, but I'm sure that Lad Sessions, who will introduce her, will know how to pronounce it by the time she appears here. Valentina Dimitrova Grazil, or something close to that. <laughs> She's a professor of economics and business at, at BMI, and her Kendall College series will be on May 25, June 1, and June 8. And then this summer, we have a program on Greek mythology for today's world by Matthew Lore, who is a Washington and Lee professor of classics. And it will be on July 27, August 3, and August 10. The way to remember those two programs is it's the last Wednesday of a month and the first two Wednesdays of the following month. And we have more in planning that we're thinking of uh, perhaps for this fall. Uh, since I'm up here and I had five minutes, uh, Paul suggested that I segue into uh, uh, the uh, C&E uh, report by mentioning a program that's coming up in two weeks uh, that I was responsible for arranging. And so I will tell you just briefly that on May 4, um, two weeks from today at four in the afternoon, uh, we are having uh, Professor Molly Mitchell Moore, who is the chair of Washington and Lee's history department, uh, come and talk to us about CRT, critical race theory, which everybody seems to be talking about uh, on some television stations and uh, which uh, uh, is getting a lot of attention in the newspapers. Nobody really knows for sure, I think, what it is or when they, when they oppose it. But um, uh, it was in the paper yesterday because uh, some BMI alumni are, are coming down hard on General Wins, the superintendent, and others at BMI for allegedly uh, teaching critical race theory. 
Um, if you read uh, probably this morning's paper, uh, critical race theory has been identified in Florida by Governor DeSantis as appearing in mathematics textbooks. Uh, and it, it's, it's kind of hard to figure out how that works, but come in two weeks and hear Molly Mitchell Moore tell you about critical race theory. Thank you, Paul. Martin and Kay, who's going to talk, give a little update on, on the CNE program. And of course, you always want to look at the CNE bulletin board. That'll give you the, the latest, but she's going to talk a little bit about that now. Good morning, everyone. Um, last night, we had a trip out to BV, so I don't make the mistake of pronouncing it. I'll just call it BV to. Um, to the Mexican restaurant that's the sister restaurant of the one here in town. However, the general consensus is that that restaurant in BV is better. And we had 16 people who really had a good time, took the bus out, and it was most enjoyable. So the next time we schedule it, think about it. Uh, there's a wide variety of items that you can order. Uh, and they do individual checks. We do try to go places where they will do individual checks. Um, oh, we're going, with the movies, we're starting something new. And well, we tried it a few years ago, but now we're doing it again. A Saturday matinee, once or twice a month, depending on how, how it goes. So we're gonna serve popcorn and uh, we've got the popcorn machine from Borden. And please think about coming. The movie, oh, I've forgotten what the movie is. Sorry, but it's a it's a one it's one that people have loved in the past. Um, let's see what else we have. Uh, we have Linda Holmes coming soon. She's the daughter of Kathy and Don Holmes. She has not given me a title, but that's because she can talk about anything according to her father. So <laughs> do come. She's a lot of fun, and she works for the public radio in Washington, and which of course goes all over the country. And uh, she's most entertaining. She's also an author, but I, she's not gonna talk about that, I don't think. Um, the VMI theater, which is fun uh, and very inexpensive, just $5 for senior tickets, will feature three of our very own as part of the cast of the play they're going to do, which is called Tom Jones. If you want to take the bus, there's a sign-up sheet out there. Uh, parking is a little iffy over at VMI, but the bus is always a sure thing. So from our place here, we have Kevin Cavanaugh, who's going to play a very important role. We have Shay Peters, who's also going to play a very important role. And then we have Malou Pagari, who tells me that her role is not so big, but it's in the second, <laughs> second act. Anyway, um, we're, we should support our residents who participate in these community things. So it's a lot of fun and it's very inexpensive, $5 plus the fee for the bus, or you can drive. Um, the play is called Tom Jones. <laughs> Rockbridge Choral Society, <clears throat> excuse me, is having a concert coming up soon. The sign-up sheet is out there for the bus. The tickets are available at the door. You, they had, in the original advertisements, it had said to buy them online. Most of us feel that that is a pain in the neck, plus the charge for the online purchase. So they have decided to sell them at the door. I'm very happy about that. And they are wonderful. So I hope you all will enjoy it. And then I have down here on the May 4th, the talk on the CRT, which uh, critical race theory, which Harden just mentioned. In May, uh, Saturday the 14th is the thing that we have all looked forward to and the new people will enjoy is the VMI parade. It's a really, really great experience. And VMI 
this is going to save seats for us. We will take a bus. And I recommend that you take the bus because parking for that parade is a challenge. So, but you can try it, but the bus is really worthwhile. And the parade is terrific, especially when you have reserved seats right up front. On the 17th of May, Gisela Telmas, who is our person who coordinates the restaurants, she's arranged for us to take a bus out to the Edelweiss restaurant, which is, uh, I think it's in Steel Tavern, I think. But anyway, it's, it's right on the way to uh, Waynesboro or um, Millmont, where you go for plants. There'll be a sign-up sheet for that. That's on the 17th, Tuesday, the 17th of May. And then um, also in May, we have Keith Gibson from VMI, who's going to speak about the history of VMI. So those of us who are not native to Lexington or have not attended VMI should find that quite interesting. And then this is something that's really, really great. And on the 23rd of May, we will once again have the Sunrise Ridge boys here to perform right before dinner. So that's, that's something that we all enjoy. And we usually fill the Kendall Hall for it. In June, we have uh, a restaurant des designation of TAPS. That's it for the uh, Culture and Entertainment Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. And now for the highlight of our meeting here, lunch is on hold. So don't go down to the dining room because all the staff is right here and they're coming up here to be introduced. So the benefit of those who didn't show up in person. We're training as we go here. I feel like a, a goose with your little ducklings. <laughs> so hello everybody, welcome. I'm well out there at Zoom. I'm a little taller. I can step back and be a midget. Um, so our cooking staff here, you know what? They're a very dedicated group. I can honestly say I am very proud of each and every one of them. They work very hard for all of you. And it's just a great, great crew. So without further ado, Brooke, you want to start? <laughs> Hello, my name is Brooke, and come June, I will be here a year. And pull your mask down so they can really see what you look like. How many years? <laughs> She's had a wanted poster at the post office if anybody forgets what Brooke looks like. Hello, my name is Karen, and in November I've been here for two years. Woohoo! Hello, I'm Lindsay, and in December I'll be here for two years. Hello, my name is Wanda, and I've been here three or four years. <laughs> Six years for me. Hello, my name is Linda, and I've been here for 17 years, and I work here. Hello, my name is Naina. I'm working 11 years working. Hi, I'm Jenny. I've been here six years. all her herbs and spices and stuff. She's predominantly responsible for vegetarian, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. I've been here 13 years. Can you bust in? <laughs> 
the more details <laughs> Work short people in fun. <laughs> Two rows here. Squeeze in as much as you can. Karen switch. Judy and Karen switch. I want to play bingo. Bingo! <laughs> Yeah, keep the mask on and then another one off, I think. Yeah. Mask off. But now you have to smile. Mask off. 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 Mask You may not see these folks all the time, but they are behind the scenes making everything work for all of you. Me, I don't, I just kind of hang out and watch them work. So up, sorry, what? I said amen to that. <laughs> There's my little bird on my shoulder. So I do have one announcement for y'all. Um, May 1st, May Day, we're going to minimize, take away all the paper and foam. So please make sure you have your um, recycled black containers ready to go. I myself have to buy a coffee cup because my cups are really big and they don't fit under that coffee machine. And I'm probably the worst offender of running around with a green cup with a lid on it. But uh, in order to maintain sustainability, that's going to be our first move. So please keep that date in mind. May 1st. I'm going to need your all help, all of you, to make this happen. Jan doesn't think we can do it. So let's make sure we get her done. <laughs> that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. And next month, we're all going to have the housekeeping folks up here. So we want to get all the uh, all the workers, the ones that are working for us up here to introduce themselves. So please show up for that. And now Anita is going to give us a little bit about sustainability and probably something about plastics and benches. <laughs> Good morning. Oops, drop that. Uh, three things for you this morning. Uh, first, this Friday is Earth Day. Now, every day is really Earth Day since it's the only one we have. But this Friday, we're celebrating Earth Day. And in recognition of that, there will be a table uh, down by the dining room at both lunch and dinner. There will be handouts on the table about various ways that you can help uh, preserve, save, ensure the future of our earth. Uh, you can pick up whatever you would like. Uh, there will be members of the sustainability committee who are also members of CAP, who are also members of SAFE, who will be there to answer questions or whatever it is you need. Uh, I hope that you stop by. Uh, there's a little surprise there. The people sitting at the table don't even know about it yet. Uh, but they will. So that's the first thing, Earth Day. Second thing, those of you who live in the apartments who use uh, the mailboxes, the metal mailboxes, uh, know that there is a recycling container for paper that is next, well, just to the left side if you're looking at those mailboxes. Because that is a recycling container, we need to make sure that what's in it is recyclable. And that means that if you get an envelope that seems pretty heavy and it's from someone you don't want to deal with, please, if you're going to recycle it, you need to open it. And the primary reason, just a minute, no, 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 come here. I need your hand. <laughs> and the primary reason to recycle it is because many of them have, among other things, this one has a workbook uh, with pictures and things if somebody would like that. Uh, but more importantly, it has sticky things, sticky labels, your name labels, or in this case, uh, 
right side up. It's about trees. Just a minute, not quite that close. It's about trees because it's from Arbor Day Foundation. Sticky labels cannot be recycled. They gum up, literally, the recycling facilities. So I know it's a pain. I know you get more stuff in the mail than you want, but please open it, remove sticky labels or bumper stickers or similar things. Does anybody want this workbook? It has some Sudoku, it has some coloring things, it has some word puzzles. Um, I'll leave it right there. Pardon me? Thanks, yay. Yes. Third thing is about treks, because I would hate for Paul to have said that I'm talking about treks, if you'll take those and not talk about treks. It's hard when your assistant is not as well trained as he needs to be. <laughs> but available. Our first bench, as you know, was, uh, has already arrived. It will be placed outside of, uh, in a covered walkway by Webster because the staff voted on that. So the first one was staff voted. The second one is already on order, so it's in production. And it will arrive probably in May, and it's slated right now to go up on Hickory Hill. We are well underway now on a third bench. So all of that plastic film that you are bringing in and putting in containers around campus really does pay off. In fact, so much so that I, I created a second company to, to be able to manage it because we had so much of it. But we have already kept out of the landfill 1,027 pounds of plastic film. And it hasn't been quite a year. So thank you, keep bringing it in. But let me point out, there are some things not to put in. How many of you get stuff that comes with plastic rings? Yeah, please don't put these in the plastics recycling. They don't recycle. But if you put them in the trash, which is where they have to go, please do something to help the animals and the birds that scavenge in landfills. Cut them apart. Cut the rings. I know, again, it's another thing that's a pain, but you need to do that because otherwise birds and other creatures stick their necks through those holes. And then as they grow, they get strangled because they can't, you know, we can pull it off. They're not quite as capable. So that's a little side point. It's not recyclable either in the trash or either in the recycling collection that Kendall does or in the plastic film. But because you put it in the trash, help save animals that, and birds that scavenge. Questions? Yes? Comment. Comment. That goes for the bin and the other wing of Kendall, the cottage people in the clusters, Sycamore Lane, the hill, please, if you've got a big envelope, take it and open it up. Yes. My wife, the queen of trash, <laughs> goes through the big bin here on the second floor, probably three or four days a week. Yes. And that's part of the reason I know that there's a problem with things that go in it that are sticky, because Robin, Robin has shared that as part of sustainability committee. But those sticky labels aren't recyclable anywhere. They, they have to go in the trash and they literally gum up any of the facility machinery at recycling centers because they come off the paper, which is what they're intended to do. But they're not intended to stick inside the machinery, which is what happens. Thank you, Nelson. Anything else? Yes, Susie. Uh, if you don't use Outside of your paper, would you please put it in the alcove in the very left hand blue bin? 
Okay. And I want to thank the library committee because they put all of their music paper from their uh, inventory in there. Now someone still would most of that. <laughs> anyway, that's really helpful for trying. Susie asked that if you if you have paper that you've printed one side only, maybe you've printed out the menu. And after the week, you've got that left there. Would you please bring it in and put it in the appropriately labeled bin in the resident alcove uh, because it gets reused on the other side. So if you're not going to reuse it, somebody will. Anything else before Paul pulls me off with a crook around my neck? <laughs> Thank you very much, Anita. It's a few minutes after 11. Nobody left me any time. So as a, as I'm going to use my prerogative as the president of this austere organization. I do have a couple of comments. The Red Book Revisions, thank you to those people who submitted comments to the revisions of the Red Book. Uh, we are meeting uh, Diane Herrick, uh, Joe Scavere, and myself are meeting next week, and we'll review all these comments and decide which ones we'll incorporate. Uh, a lot of more just uh, editorial, uh, grammatical things, which we certainly will, uh, will, will incorporate. And so we'll come up with another version and I will place that version on the table and it'll be posted on Katie, the new version. Um, unfortunately, the current Red Book states that any revisions to the bylaws can only be approved by the association at their annual meeting in November. Now we've changed that in the new revision saying we can approve revisions to the Red Book at any time by the association. But unfortunately it's been pointed out to me that I have to abide by the current Red Book regulation. So actually the bylaw revisions will not be formally approved by you until November. Do I want more comments on the Red Book? Not necessarily, but you're free to submit them and Joe and Diane will continually meet to review them. But anyway, that's what's going on on the Red Book. In the meantime, the administration is working on their part, which is the rest of the Red Book, and they hope to have their part done by this November. So we're gonna have the entire Red Book completed for our November meeting, which will be announced. And then we'll ask for, for consensus. And I don't wanna see any hands raised for when we have consent, but cons we'll seek consensus for the Red Bull. And that will be it for the revisions for during my tenure here anyway. Another thing, the, the Kendall board meets every other month and generally in May at their May meeting, they invite residents to attend the Kendall board meeting. However, in May, we have a little, we have Tim Gaylord is coming back for Nancy Epley's uh, concert that was scheduled in January. So he's going to he's coming back the same day as the board meeting. So the board will not invite you all to attend the May meeting, uh, but they will invite you later on in the fall and we'll let you know when you're invited to come to uh, sit in at the uh, Kendall board meeting. And the final thing is the fellowship fund. Unfortunately, to date, we have only collected $31,775. 73 households have participated, made donations. Last year, 103 households uh, made donations. So we have almost you know, 25 to 30 less households who have participated this year. Last year, we collected over $67,000. So we're down quite a lot. Now, the informal uh, donation period is ended in March. However, it, it remains open. Now, the fellowship, the fellowship fund is very important. It is, it is, the purpose is to ensure that any of us, any of us residents, if our financial situation deteriorates, the, you know, the stock market goes down, whatever, and we can no longer afford to pay the fees, our monthly fees, we can apply to the fellowship fund and ask that fund to pay all our part of our monthly fees. The purpose is that you will never be asked to leave Kendall based on your financial situation. That's the purpose of the fellowship fund. So it's a very important fund. 
Now, I know we also have the staff appreciation fund, and we all know that's a great fund because we want to donate and we want to pay our staff for all the good work they've done all year. But just remember this fellowship fund is very important for us personally. None of us know, unless we have, you know, you know, a couple of million, hundred million dollars uh, sacked away, if that could happen. Right now we have, uh, I think, one person who is receiving uh, donations from the fellowship fund because of the circumstances. Next year it could be two or three or four. And I know this past year, they felt last year the fellowship fund gave out thirty thousand dollars of that money to to supplement the income a loss of a, one of the residents. So all it takes is for two or three or four of us or five of us or even more, we could really be in bad situation. Right now we have one point nine million dollars in the fund. That's not going to go very far if there's more than one or two or three of us. Uh, I was told that we need at least $5 million endowment to make it reasonable, a reasonable amount to cover the, this eventuality. So please, if you have not, if you were in the household, have not given this year, please reconsider and write a check uh, to the fellowship fund and just drop it in the, uh, that metal mailbox by Karen's office or give it to Karen, whatever. Uh, we would really appreciate it. We'd like to bring that $31,000 up closer to what we did last year is 60000 The information is in the brochures that, that I showed you last year. They're out on the table there. It explains the fellowship fund, the purpose, also the staff appreciation funds as well. And so we ask you to consider that. We don't want to keep pressing you for money. We all gave a lot of money to this organization to start with, but we do have some ongoing needs. And we want to make sure that all of us remain here as residents at Kendall. So, do we have any questions from Jan? She's she's hung in here the whole time. Do any questions of Jan or Herbie or anyone else or me? Well, thank you very much. There's food left over, and for those who came in person, you're entitled to a second breakfast. Please clear out that all that food there, so there's nothing left for the dining room to take downstairs. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.